A few months back, my wife was browsing Facebook Marketplace when she spotted something interesting and sent me a message. Well, obviously this was an amazing idea, so I drew up a CAD model, headed over to a friend's workshop and started putting things together. The table only came with a glass top and bottom, so I got four more pieces of tempered glass cut to size and had the holes drilled in the corners. I disassembled the table and started cutting holes to mount the glass and root the wires. Ideally, I'd like to have used a pre-made two-way mirror glass, but the cost of it was just prohibitive for the build, unfortunately. So instead, I went for vinyl sheeting, which I applied using water and a squeegee. The result isn't perfect, but it works well enough in this case. Now I needed to decide which type of LED strip to use, and due to the length of the strip required, which was about 10 meters, I decided to go for 12 volts WS2815 strips in order to keep the current requirements to manageable levels. I had recently been approached by Shenzhen Guanz Photoelectric Co, who graciously agreed to sponsor the cost of the LEDs, and you can find a link to the AliExpress store in the description below. Now I've never used WS2815s before, so before I planned the electronics and power supply, I thought I'd do a quick investigation to determine how much current was going to be required, and the results actually really surprised me, so I thought it would be useful information to pass on to you guys. Here I have a 5 meter WS2815 strip connected to my 12 volt power supply, and it's running through a test so you can see how much current different colours and brightness levels require. From the table here, you can see the most efficient colour is green, which at a brightness of 100 draws around an amp, compared to around 1.4 amps for red and blue. Amazingly, well, to me anyway, uh, white, which has all three colours active simultaneously, draws basically the same amount of current as red or blue on its own. At maximum brightness and full white, 5 metres of strip requires 2.9 amps at 12 volts, which is about 35 watts, and that's much lower than the 72 watts stated on the strip. Not really sure why that would be, uh, but it does make my power requirements much lower at around 6 amps max for the 10 meter of strip that I'm using here. Finally, you can see at the bottom of the table that even with all the LEDs switched off, the strip still draws nearly half an amp. And this is very different to the WS2812B strips, which draw next to nothing when the strip's not illuminated. And there's something to be aware of if you're using these LEDs. Anyway, back to the build. The next stage involved pulling the power wires through the frame of the cube. I injected power to the strips at four of the corners to reduce the voltage drop, and also to reduce the thickness of the wires needed to feed the strip. Although the reverse of the strip is insulated from the metal frame by the sticky backing and the plastic coating, I did notice that there was sometimes shorting where the strip had been cut, which was exposing some of the copper. Got around this problem by placing some tape under the ends of each strip, insulating them from the frame below. The metal frame does give one big advantage, however, and that's heat sinking. The LEDs get warm when used at full brightness, but once attached to the frame, this is barely noticeable. Once the wiring strips were in place, there was just the soldering to do. I say just, but it took me about four hours in total to make all the connections. And then it was on to the electronics. The electronics are housed in a 3D printed case, and the system is powered by an 11.5 amp meanwhile power supply, which is probably somewhat overkill for this application. Always a good idea to use a fuse in something like this, uh, especially considering the metal frame. And here I'm using a 10 amp blade fuse, the type you normally find in a car. The 
The 12 volt input runs to a 5 volt buck regulator, which is used to power the ESP32, and is also connected to the level shifter, which converts the 3.3 volt signals from the microcontroller to 5 volts, as even 12 volt strips use a 5 volt data signal. I probably could have got away without using the level shifter at all, as most strips do seem to work with 3.3 volt data, but there's no harm in including it just to be sure. I've used five position Wago connectors to distribute the power to the LEDs. I think these things are really good. They can handle wires from 12 to 28 gauge and up to about 32 amps of current, so there's definitely no issues there. So finally, I put the lid on and powered everything up. At the moment, the ESP32 has WLED installed to make it easy to control everything from a nice web interface. However, I am currently working on some of my own software as I like to be able to write my patterns myself. I haven't quite figured out how to do this on WLED yet, but that is something I might look into in the near future. I also hope you've enjoyed this slightly different style of video and I'll see you next time.